Coming up on the WAC Podcast, baseball opening day. Yes, it's February, but it is already baseball season in the WAC. We have week two of softball. Some upsets in men's and women's basketball over Thursday night. We're going to get into that as Jess Radford is our guest host in place of Kendra Sheehan. That's all ahead on the WAC Podcast. Welcome to the WAC Podcast, Eric Danner with Jess Radford, and it's a Friday, so we are remote, uh, kind of apropos, Jess, that I have in the background, my normal background here at home. We got Babe <laughs> Ruth, if you're watching on YouTube, and uh, Lou Gehrig, because it's baseball season, opening day today on Friday, all 11 teams are in action. We got a stacked day. Baseball is just, oh my gosh, like what, 20 games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot of softball. We are officially in crossover season, so we got indoor track championships. Didn't even mention that in the open. That's going to be on <laughs> Monday and Tuesday. Uh, swimming and diving the week after that. We're both going to be there in Far Texas, but indoor track is going to be in Albuquerque. We have Kendra is going to be headed there, and that's why you're doing the show today. But um, Kind of different on a Monday, Tuesday, but we had the preseason or the pre-championships poll come out in indoor track. In the 2024 WAC Indoor Track and Field pre-championships poll, Jess, Grand Canyon picked to win both the men's and women's titles. No real surprise there as GCU has been a real dominant force in track and field for a number of years now. Yes, they're men's. They're trying to aim for their eighth straight <laughs> <laughs> title. So, yes, actually, no stranger there. I don't think the women's won last year, so I think they're trying to, you know, take back the throne this year. But men's has been going on strong. <laughs> on the men's side, GCU number one. Southern Utah is picked second, followed by Stephen F. Austin, UT Arlington, and Utah Valley. On the women's side, as we mentioned, Grand Canyon, Utah Valley is two. UT Arlington is three. Southern Utah, four. Stephen F. Austin is five, and you can watch that live on ESPN+. Plus. Kendra's going to be doing the play-by-play with Cal Charbonneau, our outstanding analyst to, who used to run track at GCU, so we look forward to that. But back to baseball here, opening day, and all 11 teams in action, and Grand Canyon was picked to win by the coaches in their uh, preseason coaches poll last week. They opened with Georgetown, and that will be – on uh, Friday today, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. But then tomorrow on Saturday, they play USC at Salt River Fields. USC, their head coach, Andy Stankiewicz, the former head coach at GCU. So a lot of uh, things going on there. I'm sure he recruited a lot of the players currently on the Lopes roster, and that's going to be live on the MLB network, and that's from Salt River Fields, one of the spring training facilities there in Scottsdale, Arizona. And then they finish up with BYU as part of this MLB Desert Invitational on Monday. And then guess what? Then they have Ohio State coming into town on Tuesday. And Nebraska will be there for a series Thursday through Sunday. So when you have a place like GCU has, and they're one of the top teams in the nation, again, pick Receiving them. votes. Receiving they're votes. Some, uh, some big-time teams coming into GCU. Absolutely. I think they're – Baseball and softball both. It's just like, you know, teams want to come in there and they want to compete against them. And we all love good competition. So why not go to Phoenix? <laughs> why not? Especially in February. <laughs> and then uh, softball, we're now in week two, Jess. And uh, there's some big time uh, games going on there as well. After one week of action, it's GCU and Southern Utah, both sitting atop the conference standings at four and one. Yes. And of course, coincidentally, Kristen Fifield, are we really even surprised how she won Player of the Week last week for our very first week? Um, having those awards, she would have four runs, six hits, .429 average, a home run, I think in the first inning against Maine, like just bombing it away in the first inning. I know Maine was like, all right, the first inning. <laughs> but <laughs> she had a 6.43 uh, slugging percentage and a 0. .969 fielding percentage. So she had a really good week last week. Um, and then Southern Utah, their freshman pitcher, she won pitcher of the week. Just to have a freshman, you you know she'll have a good year. Just to have a freshman start out the season like that, you know, you'll probably have high hopes looking forward. So Emily Delgado, she won pitcher of the week for Southern Utah this um, week. 
and what she pitched 13.2 innings she posted a 0. 0.00 era stroke out strike strike out 12 and then she only allowed four hits so and then she had a complete shutout game against uic on sunday um with six punch outs and earned a save in game one so she did really really good she had really good numbers last week so many games and, and a lot of them started uh Actually, we'll be finishing up uh, before too long here as we record the show here on uh, Friday morning into the afternoon central time. But, uh, yeah, a lot of softball action to be excited about. But, uh, you know, it's February and we're we're just around the corner from March Madness. So the big story really just basketball. Let's start on the men's side. Uh, Thursday night action. Uh, Grand Canyon we've uh, talked about on the road to Wack Vegas. Best record in the nation uh, tied with both uh, Connecticut and Purdue, Connecticut, the, the defending national champions. And GCU wins again, 73-61. Kind of similar to when they played Utah Tech a few weeks back in St. George, where uh, the Trailblazers really didn't go away in, in this one. And Duke mm-hmm. Brennan having an outstanding game, 16 rebounds for Brennan in this one as GCU moves to 23-2 and two, on the season as uh, Brennan had that career-high 16 rebounds. Um, was that like a, a record for the school? I wonder. Uh, 16, I would guess not. No, maybe I'm but, thinking like uh, that's, the women. Maybe, maybe the high for the year. Yes. No, oh, for sure. I don't even think anybody is touching 16. That's a lot. Grand Canyon, though. Jeez. I'm, I would not want to play them. But weren't they trailing in the first half? They always yeah, trailed. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, when they played Utah Tech uh, back in January, they were down uh, double figures in the second half and then came back to win. So, it, it, I mean, it's it's a good sign, I guess, for for, Grand, for Utah Tech that they are able to play with Grand Canyon, haven't been able to close it out, but it's a tough environment there, Global Credit Union Arena, and uh, they have not lost a single game there. So that uh, that is how it's going for GCU. By the way, uh, program note, we will have, a new commission on campus coming up this Wednesday. Brian Thornton's been going to different campuses and talking to student athletes. This one, uh, it would be one you want to mark on your calendar. Gabe McLaughlin is his guest guest on this, and they they get deep. They they, they talk a lot of a lot of different things. Of course, uh, Brian was an outstanding Division One basketball player at Xavier University and played overseas uh, professionally as well. So has a lot of uh, similarities in in his story. Uh, along with Gabe, uh, one of the things I, I learned as as I'm putting the piece together here, Jess, is Gabe actually started at West Point. Um, oh. initially. He was in the wanted to be uh, an engineer in the Army. Things didn't work out there. He wound up going to a prep school, um, and then SEMO uh, uh, before he transferred back home to Grand Canyon. Where his mom is an employee at Grand Canyon. So I mean. Kind of just all all worked together there, and his brother was a soccer player there. So yeah, they're, they're, he is really Mr. GCU. They used to have a guy named Josh Braun a few years back. They used to call him Mr. GCU, but I think Gabe McLaughlin might have wrestled that title away from him. Oh yes, he has that on lock because I feel like every time we talk about Gabe, it's something new I learned about him. It's like what I learned about last time. He was a pastor, or he's trying to become a pastor. Yeah, he's um, uh, he's uh, getting a degree in uh, divinity studies. Yes. Already has a degree in engineering. Um, and so, yeah, very uh, uh, not shy about his faith. Uh, we'll, we'll share it with you. And, you know, that that's a big part of his story as well. So, yeah, excited to to release that uh, with uh, Brian Thornton here on uh, Wednesday. Other games that we had last night. How about uh, Tarleton clinching a spot in WAC Vegas? Tarleton is definitely a team to watch. I'm not sure how well they did last year um, in the tournament, but this team is fired up and they are doing so well, especially to have an interim coach, right? First year and they're doing so well. I'm like so thoroughly surprised and I'm just so happy for the coach himself. Like, you know, you're stepping in for a role that I'm not sure if he was prepared for, or I'm not sure if it was just out the blue and they were like, you need to step up. I'm not sure about the, um, illness that the other head coach um, had, but just to have such a great season um, and still just doing well and getting into the tournament. I'm excited to see them. So they they, beat UT Arlington 80 to 78. Uh, The score in the second half, just 52 to 45. They scored 52 points in one half of action there at UTA. They are now 18 and seven overall, 11 and three in the WAC. As you mentioned, Joseph Jones has stepped in as their interim head coach, Billy Gillespie, 
uh, stepped aside uh, to deal with some medical concerns. And Joseph Jones, who played for Billy Gillespie at Texas A&M, has, has been an assistant for him, has uh, stepped right in, and the team has not lost a beat. Lou Williams has been playing fantastic. He had 22 points in the win. Uh, they also, Ja'Cory Smith has had 18 points, and those two guys have really been in our highlight packages and those kind of things. Uh, for quite some time, and they have now won six games in a row. And UT Arlington, a very good team as well. So mm-hmm. to beat them on the road uh, by two points, that that speaks well for the Texans. Oh, no, for sure. I'm surprised they didn't even go into overtime, like all of our games seem to go into. That would have been a good one. <laughs> we also had a Seattle U knocking off Southern Utah. That was 78-68 to 68 in Cedar City. As the, the Red Hawks, the, their team... I think especially once we get to the tournament, you know, when, when they have everybody healthy, you know, uh, John Christophilus had 25 points. Cameron Tyson, you know, one of the great players in the WAC the last few years, had 18 in that one. They are going to be definitely a team to watch as well. We had uh, perhaps an upset, would you say, Jess, in Utah Valley, uh, taking down California Baptist at CBU, 69 to 46. I, I guess not as much an upset as – you know, when it's conference play, anybody can beat anybody, but to, you know, really beat them, you know, soundly 69 to 46. Yes, this is actually very low scoring for California Map. This is my first time actually seeing the score, and I'm actually surprised. <laughs> and for them to be at home, too. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> Drake Allen scoring wow. 19 points. Trevin Dorius pulling down 13 rebounds in that one. And Abilene Christian picking up a win on the road, 87 to 79. At UTRGV, Hunter Jack Madden, a career-high 27 points for ACU. And this is a team, uh, again, uh, when we get to tournament time, you know, they're 4-9 and nine in the WAC, so they're kind of on that bubble. Mm-hmm. But they have shown at times they can play really well, kind of play with anybody. UTRGV, another team, uh, and I've said this all year long, just not as bad as their record indicates. So they're 6-18, they're 2-11 mm-hmm. and and in the WAC. You know, definitely on the outside looking in if the tournament were to start today. But Abilene Christian getting a big win on the road, 87-79. When we come back, we're going to talk some women's hoops next on the WAC Podcast. WAC Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires WAC Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash Vegas. Welcome back to the WAC Podcast. Eric Danner and Jess Radford now talking women's hoops, Jess. And Grand Canyon in first place. They'd already clinched their spot in WAC Vegas, but uh, not a huge surprise that they win, but maybe a surprise in the way they won 88 to 41 over Utah Tech. Yes, Utah Tech was at home. Um, Grand Canyon, of course, a good team, but Utah Tech has definitely been on a winning streak as of lately. They've been climbing our WAC standings. They've been climbing our WAC resume seating system. Um, so for them to u- lose, like, you know, by 40 plus was extremely surprising to me but I mean as we all know Grand Canyon is just such a good team who knows how to pass the ball around who has multiple people who can score you have three people who's in double digit figures uh Trini San Antonio she's back from an injury she's been back since like the beginning of January but it's literally back like she's never left she hasn't you know lost the beat so she had 21 points five rebounds Olivia Lane has been doing really, really well as of late for GCU so she had 17.6 rebounds and of course T.R. Brown a name that you should not be unfamiliar with. <laughs> she had 10 points and four rebounds for GCU. Um, Utah Tech, do we have Maddie Warren? Yes, three points. The Warren sisters and then Maggie McCord. I just feel like you got triple M's. They, they've been doing it off of Utah Tech <laughs> recently. Yeah, it looks so like Maddie- just one of the Warren sisters played last night, Maddie uh, scoring 17. But one of the things, and I know that Kendra had a chance to talk with Molly Miller last week, the GCU head coach, and when they had those injuries kind of earlier in the year, Jess, that it allowed for some other folks to kind of step up. And in a game like that, obviously, you know, they went to what, about 14 deep, you know, in the, on the roster there. But getting, you know, Shea Fano and Sidney Erickstrup and Sidney Palma coming back now, Laura Erickstrup, those players got a lot of good playing time. 
And now, you know, they can go 10, 12 deep on any given night. No, for sure. Uh, Sydney and Laura, the twin sisters, definitely stepped up for GCU during that time where Trinity and T.R. Brown was out. Um, I know Sydney, I think she won, what, Newcomer of the Week, one of those weeks while they were away. So definitely you have a, a bench who can step up and who can score those points when you do have your main, you know, starter down. So GCU just has a stacked bench as just a stacked team in general. And I think I always say this week by week, and I, I think I always say this on the podcast, but like you don't see GCU really in our weekly awards, but that's just because they spread the ball around so much. And it's like you have people that's averaging low numbers, but they, they're getting high numbers and double digits for the team. But when you look at it at like the box score, it's just everybody can score. So you don't have those like standout people every week. The eyebrow raiser of the night, Jess, Utah Valley, 92, California Baptist, 89. And, and looking at the standings now, Utah Valley now in a tie for that eighth final spot in WAC Vegas at 4-10. and 10. California Baptist had just moved in to the top spot in the resume seating system. They had also already clinched a spot in WAC Vegas, but just goes to show you on any given night, we could have anybody beat, beat anybody. No, for, seriously, talk about Utah Valley, though. Men's beating um, CBU, and then you now have the women's beating um, the women's CBU team. So Tessa Chaney, though, career high, 25 points, 14 rebounds. She's literally put the team on her back, along with uh, Jenna Dick. We've basically been hearing Jenna Dick. When they have really good games, her name is always in the conversation. She had 26 points for Utah Valley um, and added – Five rebounds for them. Sorry, I was going to say six, but five rebounds for them. And they were just a team that was not going down without a fight. I don't know what they had for breakfast yesterday morning, <laughs> but whatever they ate, they probably should do it more often because this was a team who was trying to get it done. Going into overtime, you know, just being with them majority of the game, but then also not trying to have excuses for um, for California Baptist, but California Baptist is going through a bunch of injuries as of late. You have Grace uh, Schmidt. She has a shoulder surgery, so she's out for the season. Um, but she's probably – she's been out for majority of the season. I think that happened early on. But you have Chloe Lemon, a freshman, who's been putting up big numbers for them. She hasn't dressed out in the past couple weeks. Um, but you still have Chloe Webb, one of the main scorers in the WAC, putting up 32 points. She's always going to be get it done for California Baptist. And this time it just wasn't enough. You have Felipe Barrow. She's been stepping up for CBU as of late as those people have been, you know, injuries. She had 21 points for them. And Anaya Tua, she's been in the conversations late as far as scoring for CBU, 16 points, 11 rebounds, double double for her. So they also just have a really good team and a really good bench. But Utah Valley was just, they had the momentum yesterday. Yeah, Utah Valley had lost seven in a row to the Lancers and had been on a four game losing streak prior to that big win. So uh, congratulations to Dan Nielsen and his team because that certainly puts them right back in the hunt for WAC Vegas. UTA coming out on top at Tarleton State, 71 to 58. Here's another team that's really turned things around for Coach Sharika Wright. Uh, they started off, I believe, one and eight to start the season, Jess. And, and now here they are. They're in contention for a potential first round bye in WAC Vegas. Oh, for sure. They, I think they start out 0-5, actually. They they start out the season 0-5, and then they just went on that five-game, six-game winning streak in December. That December month was very, very key for UTA when they were on a high note. They were on a streak, and I think that I think that just goes to show that they were just building, you know, chemistry, team chemistry. It is, a, I think, not so new, but, you know, with Avery Brigham transferring from SFA, she's at UTA now. You have a newcomer, Gia Adams, who's been doing very, very well as of late past two weeks for UTA so I think they just had to you know get familiar with each other play and December was definitely a breakout month for them and they have been doing so well as a team since then um but yes playoff contention for sure to Black Vegas they've been climbing up our WAC resume seating system as well um just as Utah Tech I think Utah Tech just surpass them for fourth place um but UTA was holding that fourth place spot for a while and then UTA has been I mean Utah Tech has been um doing really well as we just said but like I, Gia Adams a transfer for UTA these past two weeks have just been so good back to back whack newcomer of the week for the past two weeks she had 22 points for them um and then Avery Brigham she's always a part of the conversation 13 points uh, near almost double double six rebounds and a look at the Vavola. whack resume seating system that is now updated here uh, UTA moving into the four spot. So record-wise, they're tied with Utah Tech, but by the resume seating system, 
They have moved ahead of the Trailblazers after last night's game. So UTA would get that coveted first round bye along with Stephen F. Austin. Grand Canyon and California Baptist are both looking good as well because they would be sitting at one and two. So they are also in good shape. A lot to shake out here before uh, WAC Vegas happens. Speaking of that, CLU wins another game. They beat Southern Utah 75 to 71. Don't look now, but the Red Hawks are uh, on a win streak. Yes, because they just beat Tarleton last Saturday. Um, so I think Seattle U is a very, very good defensive team. They also have a new team, a new coach. So they're just trying to fi- figure out the fundamentals. But a very, very aggressive, very just hungry team to get wins. But I think just in the back end, they always start off good. The first half, that per- the second, the first and second quarter is always good for them. And then towards the end, you see them just fall off slightly because they're always close. It's never like it's they have blow games, but majority of the games are never blowout. They're always close. Um, so I think this is just a team who's figuring out who's hungry to win. And like we said, they've been on a two game winning streak as of late. Seattle U beating Southern Utah 75 to 71. So they have now won three games in whack play. So they're only a game behind that uh, three way tie between Tarleton, Southern Utah, and Utah Valley. So those teams all very tightly compacted. UTRGV also now at four and nine as they fall to Abilene Christian by a final of 76 to 69. Yes, this game was actually really, really well. Uh, UTRGV just came off of a, a upset of SFA. So I know that they were going into this game really, really, you know, hyped. And it's just like, okay, we have been falling behind in our, you know, the wax standards, but a clear we're a team, you know, that's in contention that can beat these teams. Um, but of course, Abilene Christian just has so many people can, that can score. You have Bella Earl, you have Peyton Hall, the freshman, who's definitely in contention for freshman of the year. Um, and then Addison Martin, she put up 26 points and nine rebounds for them. Okay, Addison. 11-17 <laughs> from the field. <laughs> Bella Earl, who we all know had a back-to-back triple-double um, the first time in WAC history. She had 17 points and 10 rebounds in this game. And then Peyton Hall, um, who just gets it done, especially from the three-point line for Adeline. She had 13 points for them. So congratulations to the Wildcats on winning their third game in a row. We're going to take a break here. When we come back, Kendra Sheehan is going to sit down with Bryce Drew, the head men's basketball coach for Grand Canyon. The Lopes, by the way, best record in the nation. And this interview was done earlier this week before last night's game, but uh, definitely a lot of good information there coming up next on the WAC Podcast. Welcome back to the WAG Podcast. I'm Kendra Sheehan, now joined by Grand Canyon men's basketball head coach Bryce Drew. Coach Drew, great to have you on the show, and congratulations for being our first men's basketball team to clinch a spot in WAG Vegas. Well, thank you, um, and thanks for making me aware of that. We've been so locked in on each game. I uh, wasn't even aware, you know, um, you know, of that, so thank you. Absolutely. I know it's, it gets down to the wire. Sometimes you're focused on each game. You're not worried about the big picture. Just do what you got to do, get the wins and you'll obviously end up in Vegas, but also a big milestone for you this past week against Southern Utah. You celebrate your 250th career win. Did you know that that was the the game that you were going to get your 250th win? Or did you just find that out afterwards as well? I actually found out after someone uh, texted me and I actually had no idea um but very thankful you know very thankful for uh, winning that game for you know all the players that I've had um as you see enough basketball you know players win games and it helps when you have really good ones absolutely now of course this is a special team and a special season but you know is there any game in particular or any one of the many wins that stands out to you as just a big moment that you look back when you look at your career and the vast success you've been able to have you know, uh, I, I say this a lot. Every win is a blessing, and uh, you know we celebrate every win. So, so, so each one of the two fifty, you know, is a celebration. Um, I think the ones, you know, obviously that that um, you get on TV and it gives you opportunities to go to the NCAA tournament. You know, those would be the ones that stand out the most. Or San Diego State's got to be one there in the mix. And now you guys yeah. have the best record in the nation, 22-2. and two. It's a three-way tie for first with UConn and Purdue. What type of statement does that make when you, Grand Canyon is in company with some of those great programs at the top, best record in the NCAA? Yeah, you know, a uh, great compliment to, um, you know, our guys, how hard they've worked. Um, you know, they've set goals for themselves before the year. And, um, you know, right now they're on track for a lot of those goals. 
Um, a lot of work to be done. A lot of good good uh, teams in the league. Uh, every game, you know, it's like a championship game. But uh, very thankful for our record where we are. And it's really cool to be mentioned, you know, with the Purdue's, the UConn's, um, you know, with the top teams in the country. Looking back at at your team and what you guys have been able to accomplish this season, you just have so many weapons, it feels like, on offense. But one of the things that stood out to me most about this last game against Southern Utah is 43 points came from your bench. So what is it about the depth on this roster that your starters can go out and have high production, but then it doesn't lose anything when some, some of the people come off the bench and are added into the game? Yeah, you know, we really like, um, you know, some of the players that came in and played well. It was, it was awesome for Javon Blackshear. You know, we've seen him through the years just have tremendous games. He's come back from his knee, and so he's not, you know, the same on a day-in, day-out uh, basis. But uh, it was definitely the old Javon that we saw in that game, and he was just terrific. Um, you know, players like Luke Ward, Josh Baker, you know, Isaiah Shaw, um, you know, really giving us good minutes, um, you know, helping our team. Yeah, Javon Blackshear Jr., 18 points in 18 minutes of play. How do you see his role fitting into this roster? You have a ton of starters that have been solid for you all year. This guy comes in. He, he was the preseason player of the year last year before he got injured. Where does he fit into this lineup now? Depth is so important, especially as you get into the season. You know, um, it's a long season. Guys get tired. Um, and and having the and be able to to bring multiple guys in and have them be able to carry, you know, the, the scoring load during certain stretches, you know, it's a great luxury to have. And, um, you know, the more we can do that, the better we can be. But I think um, the guys have, have really uh, the roles well. They know that we have a lot of guys that can score the ball. And some nights they might get more shots. Sometimes the ball is going to find someone else and they have to play better defense and rebound a little bit more. Tyon Grant Foster, one of those newcomers, has just been electric for you guys this season and also just has such an incredible story where he he went through some medical issues, wasn't able to play the game of basketball, was able to transfer to Grand Canyon, and of course, has been just a force to be reckoned with. What do you like most about his journey and the way that he, you know, went through a, a lot of really hard times, battled, and now is able to be on the court and make such an impact? Yeah, so happy for him first as a person, you know, two years away from competitive basketball and really not knowing what his future held. And, uh, you know, uh, he's a Lord. He got cleared um, from his heart condition. And to do what he's done is really remarkable. You know, he hasn't played in two years and to step out and score the ball at such a high level pretty much from day one um, just really speaks to not only to his physical ability, but also just his mental toughness. And uh, for him to be able to step in a game and, and do what he's done, uh, it's really fun to see. At 19 points a game, he's averaging. That's good for second in the WAC. Just really incredible. And then you look at some other guys on your team. You got Gabe McLaughlin and Colin Moore, who have just been walking highlights reel for our WAC top play this entire season. What roles have they had to take on? And do they just battle it out for who has the fanciest dunk? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Colin, he he does have a have a touch for the spectacular, and um, whether he made a half court shot earlier in the year to, like you said, some of the dunks, you know, against San Diego State that he had. Um, but Gabe's been, you know, kind of Mister Consistent. You know, he he's put up highlight reels for for you know multiple years for us, and um, it's so nice to have guys that understand their role. I know you keep saying that word role a lot, but. They um they they adapt game to game. Again, if the ball finds them, they be more aggressive. If it doesn't find them, they do other things to help our team win. Now this team also has a knack for overcoming double digit deficits to come away with victories. I know if you as a coach, that's got to stress you out during the game. I can't imagine what your blood pressure goes to. But what have you worked on with this team to to play those forty minutes of complete basketball and? Try not to find yourselves in a hole because that can also become very dangerous to come tournament time in Vegas. Yeah, no, uh, we definitely don't like being down um, at all, let alone, you know, 10 plus points. Um, but like you said, it has happened to us quite a bit. And, um, you know, really proud of the guys, you know, instead of separate, they seem to come together more and really put together some good stretches to get back into the games. And, um, you know, hopefully it's something that we can correct and we have seven games left and then, you know, conference tournament. And you definitely don't want to see double digit, you know, deficits late in the year or in the conference tournament. What is something that you guys are working on in practice, just whether it's fine tuning a few things to get yourself ready to put yourself in a great spot? Yeah, you know, this time of year, I think, uh, you know, health is so important and trying to be fresh. 
So, you know, we're trying to do the best that we can um, in those areas. Uh, but also we, we definitely need to, to get better. We need to get better with some execution and communication. And uh, so trying to really work on some detailed stuff, um, you know, with a, with a goal um, to be ready, you know, for, uh, for Vegas. When you look at this team also, you know, who is someone that you want to see step up or someone that's really started to come into their own in practice that hasn't shown up on a stat sheet, but, you know, we're not in your guys' practice every day and seeing what you're able to see, who's someone that maybe we can look forward to having a spark here at the end of the season. Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, Luke War and, and, and Javon were, were two that, you know, um, that have had some good practices. And, you know, we were just – really wait for it to come out in the game. And thankfully for Luke, you know, last three games is, you know, what we get to see him do in practice on a daily basis. So it's been so nice to see him kind of break through. And then Javon, you know, Javon had a great week of practice and, you know, uh, we've been waiting for him to kind of turn that corner. And uh, we feel like he's in a really good place after this last game and his practices um, so far this week. Hey, no better time to turn the corner than mid-February with March right around the corner. <laughs> you also have Utah Tech and California Baptist. You guys are hosting both of those. Utah Tech, you played them before. California Baptist, also going to be a tough opponent. What are two things that you're looking for from your team to keep this win streak rolling, pick up lucky win number 13 and 14? Yeah, you know, it's great to be at home. So, uh, you know, we are on the road four out of five games. So being home is is nice in front of our home crowd. Um, but we know, again, um, especially as we get late in the year, every game is is magnified uh, for the standings, for seeds, uh, for momentum going into the tournament. And, you know, you definitely want to want to have momentum and play well. So, you know, two home games, we only have four home games left. And so, you know, we want to have, uh, you know, if we can, hopefully our best performance of the year and really come out and and, and play solid defense and really execute on offense. You suffered your first conference loss against Seattle U. You play them 12 days later. You get the win in overtime. What type of response did your guys show in order to be able to face a little bit of adversity and come out on top? Yeah, you know, um, very good team. Seattle's a really good team. Um, when they've had their whole roster together, I think they've only lost maybe one or two games. And so, um, you know, they played really well at their place. They played well at our place. You know, two games that basically went down to the very end. And so, um, uh, you, you know, for us, it, it's, it's about, you know, trying to get better for us and, and, you know, a lot can happen, you know, these last seven games and, and, um, and just a lot of good teams in our league. So no matter if it's Seattle or whoever, um, you have to be ready to play, um, or you're not going to win. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Ray Harrison when I was talking about some of these key players as as well. He was such a force last year when he had to step up because of Javon Blackshear Jr.'s injury. What have you seen different from him last year to this year in terms of game and also accepting maybe a different role than he's had you know, in previous years? Yeah, you know, so proud of Ray. Um, brings a smile to my face. He, uh, he scored so much for us last year and you know and this year there's games where he steps up and he has to score you know for us to be uh, have a chance to be successful and then there's other games that he's become our best defender and um you know really had to had had to play defense at a high level for us to have a chance to be successful and what I've just really enjoyed is he, he's playing the game pure and what the game's bringing is kind of what he's going after he's not trying to force something to work um or to happen and uh please his progression and and you know he'll he'll have games that, that he'll score maybe seven points but he's our most valuable guy out there uh, for how he shares the ball and, and the defense he's been playing now I just had a chance to talk to Molly Miller Grand Canyon women's basketball head coach and one of the things that we talked about was just Grand Canyon athletics as a whole and so I wanted to ask you about being a part of, of such a winning culture you had volleyball who won the tournament and went to the NCAAs for the first time. You have baseball and softball who are preseason coaches picked to win. And then you have Grand Canyon men's basketball and women's basketball, both at the top of the league. You know, what is it like to be a part of such a culture that, you know, has, has that winning mentality and mindset and just to you know, have such success in the short time that you've been at Grand Canyon? Yeah. You know, it starts at the top, you know, our schools are committed to sports and I think uh, that's definitely where it starts is, you know, that commitment. And then, you know, our fan base, we have such a great fan base that brings so much energy. Um, our team, you know, looks forward to playing in front of them and and their energy really comes off on us and helps our teams. Um, you know, so that's that's another, you know, you know, big part. And then, you know, I, I think overall, you know, our, our guys really like the school. 
Um, you know, they like the people here, they like the students here, and that motivates them to want to play harder. It's an absolutely beautiful campus if you haven't been, and the Havocs, I'm sure, will be out in full force this Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time tip on ESPN Plus when Grand Canyon hosts Utah Tech. This was Bryce Rue, head coach of Grand Canyon Men's Basketball, and thank you so much for listening to the WAC Podcast. Thanks for listening to the WAC Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And check out our website at WACSports.com.